Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I wanted to take a few minutes and show you wireless networking in Windows 95 with my trusty Cisco Aeronet 350 that I have right here. So I was in the process of setting up this beautiful LTE 5100, of which I have two, uh, and got to this point and I thought, why not take a few minutes and show you what you have to do to set up wireless networking in Windows 95. All right, let's get started. So what we have here is a fresh installation of Windows 95C. So that's OSR 2.5 as well. Uh, active desktop is enabled, which is actually something I'm not a fan of, so I'm actually going to go ahead and turn that off um, by turning off view as web page. And now we have our standard Windows 95 display. And everything else is bone stock. I haven't done anything to customize this image. So, being a laptop, the first thing that we need to do is turn on our PC card drivers. So I'm going to come over to Device Manager, come down here, and say, double click, uncheck disable, okay? And it's going to take us through and ask us some questions. Are we using a PC card to access Windows, connect with CD-ROM, et cetera, et cetera? Nope. And we want to review our system files to see what sort of real mode drivers we have since this is Windows 95 and in the day of Windows 95 you had that combination between real mode and other types of drivers. You could still use DOS drivers as such. That's why it's asking us this question. And we are also going to say no and then finish. And now not only are we going to have the computer rebooted but it's actually going to turn off to proceed. So I will click yes and lo and behold the computer is now shut off. So we'll go ahead and power it back on and hopefully it powers back on. This particular 5100 is being a little bit cranky. I think it's probably going to need a DC to DC inverter board here before too long. Luckily I do have a spare. All right, so I heard the floppy drive seek there and our monitor is a little slow to power on, but it's powered on there and it looks like we're gonna be in business. So we'll boot back into Windows 95 here. Ah, that beautiful startup sound. And now that we're booted back in, we can go ahead and proceed with the installation. Though I'm going to close this channel guide bar here. I don't think this is going to be too relevant or useful in the year 2020. So we'll close this. And it'll ask us if we want to see it next time, to which my answer is no. All right. So I'll put a link down in the description below, but for this particular Cisco Aeronet 350 driver or card, I have downloaded this bundle driver that you see here, which comes in a zip file. I'm going to double click on that and it's going to ask me where I want to unzip it. I'm going to change the directory to Cisco just to make it easy to find. It'll proceed to unzip some files here, including the wireless configuration utility and the drivers, and I believe a firmware update as well, which we don't need to run at this time. So now we can go ahead and head on over to that Cisco directory. And one level deep, you can see, let's go to a list view so we can actually read it. Driver, firmware, oh, release notes, that's the fourth thing, and the utility. So at this point, I'm actually going to go ahead and install the utility. All right, so we'll click next through this. Going to turn off Leap. Leap was kind of a kind of a corporate radius server based concept that we obviously don't have in this home environment. And I want to create an icon on the desktop for this particular Aeronet client utility. Mind you that back in this day, um, Wireless networking was not intrinsically built into the operating system. That's why we have this separate client utility that we're using to make this work. All right. So we've reached 100%. We can go ahead and click Finish. And we're all set. So the next thing we're going to do, and this is just for ease of use in Windows 95, is I'm going to go find those drivers in the Cisco directory with this nice long path. And I'm actually going to copy them out to uh, drive C directly. And then I'm going to do something a little bit unorthodox, but I want to make this folder really easy to find. So I'm actually just going to rename the folder one letter C. That way when we go to find the drivers, it makes it really, really easy. 
Okay. So I'm actually a little surprised when we restarted the machine that it didn't pop up and ask us to find the wireless card. Let's go ahead and remove it. Oh, that would be because I didn't push the card all the way in. But traditionally, after you enable those uh, PCM CIA or PC card drivers on next boot, it should say, hey, I found this card, but that's okay. For all intents and purposes, this can be done at any time. So I'll go ahead and push the card in. And we will get this prompt to build a driver information database. And there we have it, our card has been found. So we'll click the next button. It'll search the floppy drive as Windows 95 always does. Hey, we couldn't find a driver. So we're gonna to go to other locations and point it to C colon backslash C. And lo and behold, our driver has been found. So we can now click finish. Okay, we have to provide a computer and workgroup name. So I'm gonna call this LTE 5102, since I have two of these. Put in the default workgroup of workgroup, and then we'll just say LTE 5100 number two for the description. Click close. And now it's gonna want that uh, Cisco wireless LAN adapter install disk, which is at C colon backslash C. See, there's a reason I made it simple. Now it's going to want the Windows 95 installation disks, which I happen to have at the C colon backslash Win95 location. So we'll click OK. We're going to get prompted to overwrite some files that are newer, and we have some decisions to make accordingly. It doesn't rightly matter. OK, I'm going to tell it it can keep this file since it has a newer version installed. And this one as well. And this one. And this one too. All right, so now with that driver installed, we have the opportunity to restart our computer. And on first start, it's going to ask us for a username, which actually is going to be irrelevant because we're going to change the default from Microsoft Network here in a minute, but I'll go ahead and put a name in and a super secure password. So now we're gonna to proceed to step three, which is going to be configuring the TCP IP protocol. So we're gonna go up to network neighborhood, right click and hit properties. And you'll see some items listed. You'll notice we have Microsoft networks. We also have Netware networks. We have our network card driver. Then we have IPX, SPX and NetBuoy, but no TCP IP. So back when Windows 95C was popular, TCP IP, wasn't quite there yet, I presume. So we need to go ahead and add that protocol. And actually another thing I'm gonna do is remove this network client. And so that we don't get prompted for a login, I'm gonna change the login to Windows login. And that way we won't get prompted for a username on uh, system startup. So we can come here to say add, then we can go to protocol and we're gonna choose Microsoft TCP IP, okay. And then from there we can hit the okay button Going to do some more copying of files, replacing files that are already there or are telling it not to replace files in this case. There's the infamous winsock.dll. Some TCP IP utilities I saw get copied just there, like traceroute. And I bet you can guess what we get to do next. That's right, we get to restart. We're gonna ignore that other message here for a minute. Just say yes, and we will restart. So that's step three. So to recount, step one, install the client utility. Step two, install the network card driver. Step three, configure for TCP IP. There's one step left, and that is to configure the network card to the access point, as well as the security settings such as WEP for this card. All right, so here we can see as we start up, we're unable to get an IP address. And once again, that's because we have yet to connect to our access point and configure our WEP keys. Now it's worth noting that for this particular network card, the Cisco Aeronet 350, which is an older card, that it, it supports older protocols and does not have support 
Uh, most routers do not have support for the WEP protocol that we're going to use because it has been deemed insecure. I'm going to link you here to another video I've done in the past where I talk about how I've configured my router to support these particular settings. And in my case, I actually had to go buy a router that supported older protocols. So you can go review that video for more information there. But at this point, since our router is all set up, we're just going to configure this particular card to work in Windows 95. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to the Aeronet Client Utility, going to go to the Profile Manager and add a profile. We'll just call it Default. From there, we're going to put in the SSID of our network. And then from there, come to the Network Security tab. And I happen to be configured for static web keys. I don't think we have to change anything there, just there. And here I can put in my static web key. Okay, and click OK. Click OK, took us back to the Profile Manager. Let's click OK again. And lo and behold, our 350 is now associated to this MAC address, which happens to be the MAC address of my access point. All right, so now the question is, can we get an IP address? And what we're going to do is launch the WinIP CFG utility that comes with Windows 95. And let's do a release all and a renew all. And lo and behold, we have now successfully leased an IP address. And there you have it. So from there, you can do other things like go to Network Neighborhood and access shares on your network. Uh, or browse the web if you're really daring, <laughs> but pretty much do anything that you would otherwise do with TCP IP. All right, well, that's pretty much what I have for you today. I uh, definitely appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, feel free to give it a thumbs down. That helps us decide what sort of content we create in the future. Uh, definitely subscribe. There's more content to come and click that notification bell so that you can be notified when new videos arrive. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.